A very warm welcome to you. It is a pleasure to have you join us on this edition of the program, your source for all the latest happenings in the financial sector of the economy. I am Jennifer Ubidiebubi. Today on the program, we join Faith in a one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview with Honorable Olufemi Fakeye, Chairman House Committee on Insurance and Actuarial Matters in Abuja, where he spoke extensively on challenges facing insurance growth and penetration in Nigeria. It's quite an explosive one. Do have a listen. People in the industry need to wake up. This country the, is such a huge market. I don't think the insurance people are they are able to exploit what is available to them in terms of potential. So that's why I always say the industry is more or less, more or less a sleeping giant. We will also bring you highlights of the African Business Roundtable high-level event that took place recently at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, Kofo Abayomi, Victoria Island. And not forgetting our industry icon segment. These and more are what we have on the lineup for your viewing pleasure this week. So sit tight, relax and enjoy it. Details in just a moment. Please stay. This is Insurance Industry Town Hall. This is No Holds Bad. Apology to those who don't understand your value. Translate. translate. Yeah, translate. <laughs> it, is, it is not in one day that you feed a child that is kwashoko or that is <laughs> <has> <laughs> malnutrition. <laughs> you know, but well, you, can, you can see them recover. Insurance is the last hope now that Nigeria. So Sorry. my father, I want to start up a uh, new okay. insurance. I should forget about that. They are forward nine people. No, no, no. That is uh, what my father told me. Mm. But I just push it aside. So let me go ahead. And what my father told me is what happened. The greatest beneficiary of FX in this country is the financial institutions, which accounts for 48 to 49 percent, average in the last five years. This is Almond Finance and Wealth Report. All right, welcome back on the set of album today. We have the pl yeah, honor and privilege to be sitting one on one with Honorable Olufemi Fakaye, who is Chairman, House Committee on Insurance and Assurance Matters. Together, we'll be looking at challenges facing insurance growth and penetration in Nigeria. Thank you so very much, Honorable. Thank you. Good for morning. Thank, Thank you, you very, so much. very much. Okay, so I'm going to start off uh, by addressing the big elephant. Uh, just yesterday, the Chairman of the NIA in Lagos had a press conference and one of the first things he talked about was the 200 billion naira fraud as alleged by the ad hoc committee on, on insurance. So he said there was nothing like fraud, that probably the ad hoc committee didn't get enough information and clarification from the uh, insurance regulator before they went to town uh, with that allegation, so to speak. What's, what's your take on that? Well, let me make a distinction right of the bat, okay? Uh, you did say ad hoc committee. I want for the benefit of our listeners to stress that ad hoc committee is not thing to do with this committee as such. It's a separate, you know, temporary committee of the House. The House, um, like any other parliament all over the world, reserves the right to look into any situation, choosing any vehicle that the House may choose at any point in time. In this situation, um, they somebody felt there was um, fraud in the system and they felt the, uh, the, the answer was to go and investigate it. So that's the purpose of that ad hoc. It hasn't got much to do with our mainstream uh, committee. And you did say that uh, the NIA had a press conference yesterday, uh, commented on whether there was or there wasn't any fraud in the industry. Uh, so that's all I know about it. But as far as I'm concerned, we are here with a mandate. The mandate of my committee is to ensure that the insurance industry runs very well, the best way it could. Number two, the mandate also includes that we must ensure that every asset belonging to the federal government is properly, properly insured. Well, that throws up a few questions. You cannot insure what you don't know. You have to know it exists, you have to know its value, you have to know its location. 
That has been the focus of this mainstream committee on insurance since one year ago when it was put together. And that has been our focus. Suddenly came this whole idea, oh, that is fraud in the industry, we have to investigate it to fraud. So the leadership decided they wanted to investigate and so they are investigating it. So like I said, that's separate from the core mandate of this committee, which is still ongoing. Okay. Okay, Honorable. Now, would you say that before now, because you just said something that's very valid, that the part of what you want to do in this committee is to ensure that all federal government assets are adequately insured. Would you say before now that has been the case in Nigeria with federal I wouldn't know because, assets? thank you, you, I wouldn't know because we are yet about um, a year old on the assignment okay. and we have been taking steps, talking to critical stakeholders in the government, head of service, who should be the repertoire for all these fixed assets anyway. And they have been, we were engaged. But I think they told me they were thrown off by this sudden, um, you know, distraction, if you will, by this so-called, uh, you know, uh, fraud investigation. And, um, but I, you know, we're back talking to them that, look, we are more concerned about the mandate of the committee, which is to say, we want to make sure especially looking at the recession situation that we have. And even in the best of times, it is in your interest to ensure that whatever you own, mm, any fixed asset that you own is properly insured, just in case you have an accident or any fire or whatever. And I don't know, really. I cannot swear to you that so much percentage <laughs> of uh, federal government assets are insured. Okay. Or not. But my guess is that maybe they are not. Maybe they are not. Because we will not know until we get to the bottom of all our own um, work right now. Okay, so um, moving on. Um, I do know that you were, were in the U.S. for, for a very long time. Um, have you had uh, the personal experience with the insurance industry as a customer or as a client, as some would say, here? And if you compare that experience with maybe the one you've had in the U.S., what, what would you say? I don't know that there's any basis for comparison because in the U.S. we are talking about a very mature industry in a very mature economy. Here you have the, the exact opposite. Uh, in the U.S. people are well aware of the advantages of insurance to them, not just life, not just health. Even their auto, their vehicles, they know it's very important to them because they go to work and live with this or by these vehicles. But here, I'm, I'm not even so sure how many people insure their vehicles, unless you are talking about uh, the third-party third insurance, party insurance, which I'm even aware, most of these certificates are fake. Because people are thinking, oh, it's, it's, it's hard enough for me keeping my family together. So insurance is basically not that critical to them. But I think it's a matter of time and that that could change. There are many areas of insurance that don't get attention here. Okay, I mean, you have real estate insurance, you have um, uh, insurance. property insurance. insurance. So, um, when things get tight, it's the nature of finance and the human mind. When, this, when tough times come, tough times, when they come, you basically begin to reprioritize based upon the money you have available. I'm aware that most households, the first thing they throw out is insurance. Oh, I take my chances. But the thing is, what happened? The question is, in insurance, what do I insure? What is my option? What option do I have in the event I suffer a loss on this car or on this asset? Am I going to be in a position to reinstate? So, and the answer is, no. if, you are, if, you, if the answer is no to you, then you owe it to yourself to do something about it because you're going to find out in the end that insurance is always cost effective. Okay, so now speaking about that, oftentimes you hear operators of the insurance industry in Nigeria, they tell you that, oh, insurance is alien to our culture. Uh, Nigerians are so poor, they, don't even, they can't even afford to put bread on their table, so insurance is not important to them. Um, is that, would you say that is really the case why insurance penetration <laughs> is so low in, no, the, in I don't, Nigeria? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's alien. Okay? Uh, I, don't, I, I was born here. And I wasn't born yesterday. I haven't heard stories told to me by my grandparents or my parents that, oh, insurance is stupid or, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a taboo here. I think people just have to change the way they think. Okay? Um, 
and I think it also has to do with what the industry practitioners have been doing, but that they've been doing enough. There's no way you educate me about what is good for me, and I'll say, mm -mm, that is a taboo. Uh, I won't do it. For instance, if you came to me as a very well-trained insurance agent, maybe a salesman or whatever, sir, I like your house. Oh, thank you, madam. Oh, uh, and then before I know it, you go into, oh, by the way, how, with, if this house were to have a fire incident or accident tomorrow, how would you feel about that? That will, that will strike a nerve in me. That's, how so? Yeah, honorable. It's supposed to strike, but often said with most people, most Nigerians will say, oh, it's not my portion. We're so used to it. Fine. This. They <laughs> can summarize what they want. <laughs> yeah. You know, they can just throw it away against the church or the mosque or that. No. Things do happen. The question is, when they, when, they, when, when they do happen, what do you do? What's your fallback position? So I think it's now for me to really get the insurance industry people themselves to do more in sensitizing people to the need for them to buy insurance. Oh, if you say, oh, life insurance, oh, I take my chances, fine. Hey, guess what? You may have a life insurance policy when you are 20, which means for the next 80 years of your life, because basically insurance is for 100 years, yes. okay? You may not even go, you may not even die past your 100, fine. But the question is, what if? If I die at 69, my family, what do they get? What do I leave behind for them? I think it's a function that is, I like to see the industry people do more to, you know, change the mindset of the people, kill the taboo mentality or the taboo syndrome or the, 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 the thought that is alien. No good thinking person will say a very good decision in finance that protects you and your household and your family. Nobody will think it's alien. Okay, sir, uh, moving on. Would you say that um, maybe education and lack of awareness is the biggest challenge facing the insurance industry in Nigeria? I mean, if you will, yeah. Um, plus the culture, what people have come to experience mm, and what they think, but their perception of the industry. I think without throwing any figures at you, I know the little penetration that we have, the penetration is so, so low. Less, less 0. than 1 0.3, 0. <laughs> 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5, depending on which literature you are, you are reviewing. Whatever it is, I can tell you, whatever penetration that we have is mostly on auto. It's mostly on auto. Maybe then a little bit of life and all that. First of all, the industry has lost health insurance, health insurance to the National Health Insurance Scheme. Okay. They have lost Thank retirement you. to PENCOM. Okay, so who is not going to be the one to defend the theory that, oh, insurance is alien? If it was so alien, why is Pen come thriving? For but retirement. They, okay, but another question. If it was so alien, let me, let me land. Okay, if it so was so alien, why is the health insurance scheme bubbling? So it was a matter of, number one, uh, education, like you said, perception. If I have had a very bad experience in my auto insurance, okay. I, had a, I, had, I had a claim. Either I was so changed in terms of how much I got as pay out or the timing, the delay in getting that thing. So chances are when you are discussing the insurance of any other asset. What I what I went through in my little auto experience, the claims experience, it would, it would affect me. I said, I bet I've not even <laughs> been able to <laughs> go. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not happy about my auto insurance. I'm not asking to insure this house with them. I think, I think we need to have this this change of uh, paradigm and it cuts both ways but I think to the extent that the industry is the one that wants to grow then they have to do more to sell their products to market themselves to convince me that yes I have nothing to lose but my ignorance after listening to them okay sir I want to take you a little bit back to what you just said when pension was with the insurance industry. They didn't thrive this much. When health insurance was under them, they didn't thrive this okay, much. Then all, that's my point. That's all my of a sudden... So, <laughs> that, that puts a question mark to the theory of this alien, 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 whatever. That's not alien. It's about not enough focus, not enough attention. Now, question for you is this. Am I saying, or would you suggest, therefore, that we begin to have a commission for this uh, commission? No. The industry need to, needs to wake up. 
and salvage whatever is left over. Right now, the industry is still into marine life or to and all that. That is enough to keep them busy. But they need to do more. For instance, uh, you buy a car today, uh, let's say 10 million naira. No, let me, let me, let me refocus that. I bought a car a year ago, 10 million naira. Fast forward, today is the anniversary, <laughs> today is the anniversary of that purchase. So my car is one year old today. <laughs> now, question is this, you are laughing. Already. <laughs> if I was going to, if, if there was an accident on that car two weeks ago, and I wanted it replaced, let's say it was total, many it was written off. Oh, insurance is very happy with me, they like me, blah, blah. What's the best they can do for me? What's the maximum that they will give me? Without any deductions at all? 10 million. 10 million. But there will be deductions, right? Yes. But I assume there were none. So they give me a check for what, 10 million. Uh, now, question. What, <laughs> can I get 10 million to replace that car That's today? No. Heck no. All right, so if I know that and I'm an insurance salesperson, then I need to really say, hmm, if I could just find a way to convince more and more Nigerians as to the reasonability, the common sense in spending their naira to insure that which they own. So, if, for instance, I have to spend half a million naira to insure that car, I would have thought it was money well spent because suddenly, if the car was to have been uh, written off without any insurance, or I would have lost 10 million naira as at the cost of buying the vehicle. But today's replacement is what? Maybe it's even 15, maybe it's 17. So, there's going to be value added when you buy insurance, but the industry people need to want. Delay claims, they need, to, they need to know that delay claims discourage people. It's a bad experience to them. Oh, also, maybe when they are shortchanged in terms of working out what is due to them, they don't feel good about it. So it's like, that's it. I think I'll just take my chances. People in the industry need to wake up. This country the, is such a huge market. I don't think the insurance people are, they are able to exploit what is available to them in terms of potential. So that's why I always say the industry is more or less, more or less a sleeping giant. But it takes, well, it, takes it, it takes time. But I think with time, with more activity hmm, by the industry practitioners, we are going to really get moving. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Moving on, we now bring you highlights of the African Business Roundtable high-level event in Lagos. The theme was Brexit, next steps and implications for the Nigerian economy. The guest speaker was His Excellency Mr. Paul Ackright, British High Commissioner to Nigeria. Enjoy. <laughs> The African Business Roundtable is a business association that was set up in 1990 as a result of business leaders in the Private Sector Development Unit of the African Development Bank. Seeing the potential in mobilizing the African private sector into a coherent body capable of re-engineering the continental role of private enterprise as the engine of growth for Africa. The African Business Roundtable recently put together a high-level roundtable in Lagos at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, Kofo Abayomi, Victoria Island. The theme was Brexit, Next Steps and Implications for the Nigerian Economy. 
the guest speaker was His Excellency Mr. Paul Arkwright, British High Commissioner to Nigeria, welcoming the selected audience to the event. On behalf of the President, Erelu Abiola Dosumu said that Nigeria is a place to be for international businesses leaving the UK as a fallout of Brexit because of its huge population and a growing middle class. With a market of over 170 million population, a growing middle class and a gateway to West Africa, Nigeria is the place to be for international businesses. My advice would be for a deeper understanding of these issues on both sides and if possible, we should encourage trade and investment missions on both sides to position businesses from here for opportunities in the UK and vice versa. Working together, both countries should also explore opportunities to do more on the world stage. For example, in the Commonwealth, where Nigeria and Britain are two great players. The African Business Roundtable wants to achieve private sector-led regional economic integration and sustainable development of Africa based on good corporate governance and open market systems. Delivering his lecture, the guest speaker, Mr. Arkwright, stated that they are encouraging British businesses to come here to look at opportunities to invest in and create jobs. And on the economy front, on the economic front, we're encouraging businesses, British businesses, to come here to look at the opportunities to invest in Nigeria and to create jobs here, notwithstanding the difficulties. So I'm an optimist, and I see that that connection that I've described is becoming stronger. The UK is naturally looking to grow our own market share here, to encourage those businesses to come here and invest, and of course to encourage inward investment from Nigeria into the UK. Will it mean more Nigerians travelling to the UK? Well, I certainly hope so. In 2014, over 168,000 Nigerians applied for visas to the UK. Over 70% of those applications were successful, and the visas were granted within 7 to 15 days from the date of application. For some reason, some people seem to think that this is not true. Uh, I have had lots of individual stories about difficulties that people have had with visas. But the vast majority, let me assure you, the vast majority of Nigerians uh, get their visas uh, as requested. Uh, and they're very welcome. We want Nigerians to travel in the UK. They come to do business, to study, to see family and friends, and to invest in our economy. There are around 250,000 Nigerian nationals living in the UK at the moment. So the key thing for any visitor to the UK is that they respect the law and the length of time their visa says that they can stay. And if they do that, they are, of course, extremely welcome. The other speaker was Mr. Olufemi Adiagbo, Managing Director, Konavik ICT Advisors. The high point of the event was interactive section where participants asked questions. We experienced some pains. Nigeria experienced a lot of pains in moving along this line. We are struggling. We are struggling to bring these people along so that we can, get, we can reach the heights you have reached. Now, what were your pains? Why did you? What were your pains? So that we can learn from it. Otherwise, you are pointing to us that eventually Nigeria should break because I think we can even stand on our own. But for solidarity purposes, but shall we eat solidarity forever? Nigeria can feed itself. Nigeria can find a problem for itself. But you see, we are, we are tied to this idea by ourselves that we must keep our brothers and make sure that. Now, you had your brothers, Europe, European Union, why did you break? I'm aware that uh, the UK, being our uh, colonial master, <coughs> has been in the past protecting our interests within the EU countries. Now, 
if the UK decide to exit EU, what has been the plan in place by the UK to protect Nigeria? Not only Nigeria, but the African as a whole. Responding to some of the questions raised, Mr. Ackwright said that the government must continue to work on the ease of doing business in Nigeria. No doubt, Brexit will have implications for the Nigerian economy. The UK government is first to admit that its journey out of the EU will not be a smooth ride as they have to negotiate their way out of the biggest divorce ever by ensuring that everybody goes their separate ways happy with the settlement. And that's our time on the program this week. I do hope you enjoyed every moment spent. Join us again next week for a fresh package. In the meantime, feel free to contact us on the numbers showing on your screen right now. You can also reach us via our email addresses also showing on your screen. Don't forget you can also visit us on our website almondreports.com, like our Facebook page Almond Finance and Wealth Reports and subscribe to our YouTube channel Almond Reports TV that is Almond Space Reports TV together to view past episodes of this program. Don't forget to join us every Wednesday by 9.45 a.m. live on Niger FM 102.7 for our Pigeon English program, Waiting Insurance, they do self. Those in Ibadan can also watch this program on BCOS TV every Thursday at 6 p.m. We are also available on WhatsApp on 080-335-7879. And please follow us on Twitter at Madam Insurance. And we'll be sure to follow you right back. My name is Jennifer Obidye. It's been a pleasure being here. Join us again next week. And until then, please stay safe. As you know, Christmas is just around the corner. Bye for now.